Okay, how are you doing? Are you good? Yeah, I'm well, thank you. Yeah, thank it's... You. Um, thank it's, you very uh, much. Yeah. I, I'm waiting to uh, join the people as our interview. Uh, so, uh, I don't know what they're doing in these days, dear Stefan, about this. We are locked down in our houses, you know, about this quarantine. What are you doing these days? Well, I'm drawing. I mean, I'm, I'm an artist and I, I, I work from home anyway, so it really hasn't made much difference to me. Um, I'm, I'm doing pretty much what I did. Um, mm. I've um, done some more work in the garden. I've, um, we, we had planned to go to Europe for 12 weeks. Um, in two weeks, we would have been leaving. Um, and we were going to attend two weddings in Germany. And so oh. that... We thought we'd just stay in between, but of course that's not happened now. But because we weren't going to be here, I'd let our vegetable garden go mm. wild. And so now I've decided to resurrect yeah, it. And this, to, um, you know, this yeah. condition is so hard to bear it, but uh, I don't know who's the blame, which country is in the front line of this outbreak, but um, mm. we hope this will finish soon. So, uh, dear Stefan, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm so happy and really, really flattered and grateful about this interview opportunity. I know you are so busy these days. Uh, I said before to you, uh, this is uh, our paradise to lock, <laughs> lock down <laughs> our rooms and sketch, sketch and sketch. So yes. uh, maybe you are scrambling uh, your works, and, but thank you about this time and for our audiences. So uh, maybe uh, these kind of interviews will be useful and may have many advantages to our audiences, to the artists and the designers also. So uh, uh, if I must uh, uh, put the two mentions to our audiences about the uh, previous uh, talk interview with the Albert Kiefer. The subject was the urban design urban sketch principles and uh, their role of color in its perception. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, uh, I must emphasize in this mention to our audiences, don't put your questions on the comment line, please. Do uh, use the icon, the question icon beneath your display and send it to me. Uh, because if you put your question in comments, maybe I ignore it. And also after 25 minutes about our interview, the conversation between us, uh, I will ask you, um, Stephen, the audience's questions. Uh, so please uh, listen up carefully. And after that, uh, put your question as a, uh, uh, in, into the icon. Okay, uh, for a first uh, of everything, uh, I always ask this uh, question before everything, that uh, what's the uh, meaning of a sketch, a sketch in your mind? And what's the exact definition of uh, in it in your mind? Yeah, yeah. Um, because I don't really have any formal training in this, I, I don't have definitions that I, I was taught and that I've learned and that I, that I carry. And, um, but... In my mind, I think I, I distinguish between sketching and drawing in the sketching is a, is a faster, rougher, mm. looser process, whereas drawing is a more considered, finished um, piece. So, so a sketch is, is more just trying to capture something quickly that's, that is in your head or in front of you. Whereas when you do a drawing, you, you, you think about it, you plan it, you put more time into it, perhaps um, there's a greater care over technical aspects, getting things in mm. the right place or colours or tones the right way. Um, that's just the way I use it myself. So most of my work that you see on Instagram, certainly, I think of as drawings, not mm. as sketches. I know that because I'm an academic guy. You know, we yeah. are in academic, we have the literature and maybe we must... Uh, uh, dignify the literature meaning of a sketch, for example. So uh, what do you think about the difference between the sketch and crocus and the drawing? Is there uh, any difference between these things to you? Well, not in my mind. Um, and, until you mentioned it to me earlier, I, I mean, I knew crocus. Crocus was a, is the French word for sketch because I use it as one of my hashtags. 
uh, yeah. on Instagram, but I, I, I didn't know that it had a had a use in English as a as kind of a rough um, mm. rough sketch as a yeah. Um, so that would that would place it between the two, I suppose, between sketch and mm. and drawing. But in in my mind, I don't I don't think of it as a, as a I mean a sketch in my mind is a rough gestural thing. Yeah. And that's all it's ever going to be. So yeah. it's not planned to be refined and polished mm -hmm. and things put in the yeah. exact place. Um, and um, whereas a drawing won't really come together until it's all done because yeah. it's been planned and, there are, and built up with lots of pieces. So until all those pieces are in place, you're not going to see what the artist has in their head. And so I don't, I don't really use crocus as a as a concept in mm. in my head. Um, yeah, uh, actually, the, yeah, actually, the crocus is coming from the uh, this French culture, and also yeah. the painters uh, that they they, they, cro they uh, sketch something like a crocus from the uh, live models, for example, yes. from the body yes. or something else. But we have the problem uh, in our literature about this sketch and yes. understanding of this, uh, because uh, if you say, uh, this is my sketch, uh, something that you emphasize about that, uh, this is not, this is a rough thing to um, transport my idea to your idea. It's a medium. Yes. You know, yes. Other yes. Two. And also uh, in, in other ones, there is no uh, exact definition of this uh, uh, literature to the popular, you know? The, yes. the people think the sketch um, is uh, uh, the whole things that um, um, that done exactly with the details, with the shadowing, something else. But, uh, and uh, to all of the students, you know, for example, uh, the, 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 some students say to me, um, we have the problem about the presentation style in the sketch. And maybe our, maybe one of our lines is, um, in, there's no uh, accurate, for example, line, the perspective or the viewpoint will be down or fail in something. So you emphasize that it's a rough things and uh, the, the problem is uh, ordinary things in it. Yeah? Yes. So thank you about this question. So about the second one, uh, when did you start sketching? I know something, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, really, I, I, I really hadn't done much sketching um, until two years ago. We were traveling in Europe um, with our family. We had another wedding in Germany to go to, um, and uh, our whole family went, and we met up, my children are adults, but we all met up in different countries, and we were all together for the first time in Paris, which was lovely, and we were walking around. And I was with my youngest daughter, who's yeah. in her early 20s, and... And it was towards the end of the day, and we were in front of Notre Dame. Um, and, and I said, oh, I think I might draw this. I'd been carrying my sketchbook around with me. And, and um, she's an artist. She, she loves portraiture. So she wanted to do it too. So, so we sat there, and, um, and I drew Notre Dame. So this is, this is <laughs> the picture that I, I sat in the, in the plaza in front of Notre Dame and, and drew this. Yeah. So this is... This is the picture that started hundreds and hundreds of pictures. For a start, for the start point, this is, I think, amazing for a start, starting point, you know? Um, yeah, and so um, I, I did a few more um, drawings in Paris and then a few in Vienna and some in Berlin at the end. And then when we came back to Australia, I didn't want to let go of the experience. So I did some drawings from, um, did some drawings from photos I took. Mm. And it's where I also began to engage with Instagram because, I mean, I, I had been an artist for, at that stage, 10 years. Mm. But my paintings, there's one of them behind me, a very big mm. painting of an Australian tree. Mm. That's what I paint. I've never painted buildings um, or anything like that. And so <laughs> it was a totally different subject, totally different medium. Um, posting them on Instagram and getting an encouraging result certainly played a part in encouraging me to kind of push on because it felt like it was this whole new world. It was um, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, what's your sketch process then? You know, I, I want to, um, talking about your process, 
For example, we have the classical process uh, uh, that I believe in it. Uh, for example, um, uh, at the first point uh, from observation or imagination, we have the imagination in design. For, uh, for instance, in uh, urban design, we are imagination about the urban space or configuration of the spaces. And after that, uh, there's observation about the artist. We are talking about observation. The first point is observation. The one object, one case observed uh, uh, with you. So after that, uh, the first phase is um, underlining, you know, and after that you starting the line work, or maybe you use the pencil or ink, something else. After that, you refine it and add the details and shadowing. So uh, what is your process about that? I want to show the audience this clip to know about your, uh, for example, one of your desks. So can you explain the process? Oh, that's, that's the one I, I did today. <laughs> that's very new. <laughs> I'm so up to date. <laughs> yeah, up to date. <laughs> yeah, very up to date, Hamid. Um, okay, look, um, mostly these days I am working from photos. Um, I, I have done some, when I came back, I did do some street sketching and lo location sketching is, is very different in lots of ways, but it's mostly, mostly I do, I do the, from photos. So the first thing is to find a photo that captures something which I feel can bring something to my drawing or where my, mm. my drawing can really bring something to the photo where there's something, something interesting. And if there's, if there's something interesting for me in the, in the image I'm looking at, and if I took the photo, mm. I quite possibly took it. Um, not that I knew I'd be drawing these when I took them, but, but there was still something in the scene that interested me. And if I feel like I can capture that in a drawing, that's great mm. because that gives me a focus when I start to think about the drawing and how I'll do it to mm. something to, to bring out, something to, mm. um, to use as a framework to kind of hang the rest of the technique on. So that's... That's the first thing, you know, what is there? Is there, um, because you want some sort of drama, some sort of contrast, some sort of statement, mm -hmm. something which will engage the senses in some way and draw the viewer in. Um, mm -hmm. Firstly, it needs to draw me in. And then, and then I try and draw it in such a way that I suppose I emphasise those elements that, that, that I see there that I think are interesting mm. so I can not exaggerate them particularly, but just mm. yeah, give someone else a similar experience of the structure that, that, that I've enjoyed. So when I've got the photo, so when I've got the photo, I grid the photo up. Um, I learned this at school and I was, you know, mm. so I literally draw uh, mm. sort of three lines down. Three lines across. I mean, it's, mm. it, it doesn't look very artistic, but it works for me. And I put the same grid on the paper I'm drawing and I use that to transfer the main lines mm. of the structure. I just find it makes it much quicker and easier and it lets me get to the bits that I really enjoy faster. <laughs> so oh, I, know. I, got um, so, uh, I have other questions about that. Uh, if yeah. you uh, use the grid lines to uh, separate the boxes and you must uh, transport the boxes to yeah. your paper. And uh, yeah. so um, if you uh, uh, ignore something um, and uh, for example, the lines that you, uh, you are uh, uh, using in your uh, works are so yes. structured and the power yes. is powerful. So if you miss some boxes, what are you doing after that? Um, look, sometimes I simplify things I'm, I'm drawing anyway. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily doing absolutely everything exactly. So in this, in this one that we're seeing at the moment, um, I certainly drew the church and the, the, the steeple and the bit in front fairly accurately, but the houses behind, there were parts there that I simplified and because um, uh, I didn't want to clutter things up too much because I still wanted the, the Tower of, of St. Trinité which is the big one in the front, to be the focus point of attention. And then from there, you kind of linger back to Sacre Coeur on the hill behind. And the massive rooftops had to be there, but they didn't have to be there as exactly as in the photo um, because 
as I said, that I think would have just confu confused the visual effect I was after, which was mm. the, 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 the drift into the eye from the tower in the front to the, the, the domes in the background. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to be um, flex, you know, have some degree. It's not a slavish process. Um, I, got, I got that. So I want to be, uh, uh, give you some professional points about your sketch. You know, I, I love your amazing sketches. So one of the uh, best points, your know, strange points of your uh, works are the viewpoints, the view spots. You select yes. the, uh, the amazing spots, something like, for example, this one, the sailing, or, yes. uh, uh, after, yeah, or this one. This is uh, the good points about your viewpoint. So I think... Uh, yes. I th well, that one, that, that one that's up now is from a photo um, which I took. Yeah. But the, the two earlier ones are from photos that Raphael Metivet took, uh -huh. who is a French photographer who I, who I follow. And because I've... When I took all these photos, I didn't know I'd be drawing. And I've drawn hundreds. And I've really run out of... Mm -hmm. reference material myself and so I started um, some of the photographers who I follow or discover on Instagram I asked them for permission to to use their photos as, as reference photos so but if, if I, you I, sorry Stefan if you will being there you choose the same spot about your skin oh yes yes I mean I'm after um, so how you handle I, that? I am I'm after well I'm after drama I'm after something oh. which 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 um, conveys a quality about the, mm. the place in some way. So these, um, these ones say in, in Palais Garnier, in, in, in the old um, Paris Opera House, uh, now the, the, the center for the ballet. I mean, they, uh, there's so much sumptuous detail and, and so many arcades and, and underneath and over parts and lights and sparkle and trying to capture that um, is is part of it, but the angle certainly um, emphasizes mm -hmm. things. So I love the fact that being down underneath the stairway, um, more at street level, um, creates darker areas, which you can then use to exaggerate the brightly lit areas upstairs in the main atrium area. And so it's Raphael, it's getting the Raphael, Raphael is joining us. <laughs> oh right, yes. <laughs> Sorry. He was he was just in Australia uh, recently last year, and I really loved right. seeing his photos of my city, and just yes, yeah, seeing my city through the eyes of a of a photographer was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Keep keep your time. Sorry. That's all right. Um, yeah, but so it's 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 creating um, a viewpoint where you're creating contrast often, and the contrast can be light and shade. They can be detail and simplicity. Um, they, they, they can be um, the directions of the lines. And so I love that there were these strong in, in those two that I, I got from him from down underneath the stairway. You had these really strong diagonal lines that, that um, marked off areas of shade. But then beyond that, you had, you had sort of more straight, sort of vertical, brightly lit areas. And I, I just felt they created a lot of visual interest. You, mm. you want things that the eye will jump around at. Um, and you also want things that will help you, um, help you emphasize certain parts of the drawing. Otherwise, it just looks flat. Mm. And, yeah. and, and so, yeah, there, there was. So, so one of the things I, I really work at creating in my drawings is a strong sense of depth. And that's, that's a very strong emphasis, I think, when I choose subjects. I, I tend to, with a couple of exceptions, I, I t tend to prefer ones where they do go back a long way and then creating that sense of going back and not having it all look fairly flat on my page. So, Yeah. Uh, so um, how about, you, how do you handle your proportions, your configuration, your, you know, the proportion is so important for uh, the sketch. Yeah, numbers. well, and if, it's, uh, sorry. I was going to say, with, with, when, I'm, when I'm doing it this way, I, I don't really have to worry too much about proportions. If, if I'm careful with transferring it, 
and I put things in the same places, then then that 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 does it for me. But but um, when I do a location drawing, so this is this mm. is a location drawing of the of the yeah. town hall in Sydney. Now, yeah. so I I did this without any boxes, without any photos. I I, I sat down with people all around me um, for about two hours to draw this. And what I what I tend to what I do with this is, I'll start with a certain part. So I might with this one. I actually started with, yeah, I started with this part, this this upper floor, this square, and I basically just drew it, and then I use that as as like a a reference point for everything else. So once I draw this top square, I thought, okay, well, the bottom one is the same width, and it's the same depth. There's a little bit more down here. So, and then so I had this so, section. Do you uh, do you emphasize the that part that part of the sketch? And uh, is there a magnificent things for you that you were starting from that part or something dominating, the, or uh, because of this is well probably because this was this program. Was, uh, no, I started with this because it was the closest part to me. Ah, so so I got that. Yeah, it was the closest part of the building to me, and. And besides also being the reference point for the scale, the proportions mm -hmm. of everything else. Mm -hmm. so, so once I had this, I looked in real life and I thought, okay, well, the tower oh. is smaller than that. So I had this. I, like went up, okay, so I got that. Like a modular, you uh, handle all of, all of the things that uh, related to that thing. Yeah. And also drawing this part first this is going to be if you like because it's closest the sharpest detail so once i established this as i drew the other bits going further back it, it let me work out how um uh, how much less detail to put in to help it sit further back to help it sit behind this so um yeah so i, I really drew this one kind of like bit by bit and it kind of spread out from there i didn't do an overall outline of the whole thing. I, I really did this, pretty much finished it, did the next bit, finished it, put the tower on, finished it, and then I did, uh, I think this bit was the last bit that I did, stuck on the end there, so. Um, uh, sorry, uh, I must ask this question too, about the technique that you use in it. For example, uh, how to use the, how you handle the context and the, the the texture, for example, the shape of the things, and uh, also the saturation contrast. You using the uh, fully density objective like this, for example, to, uh, the churches are so detailed yes. objects. And so after that, you finish this. Uh, how do you handle the texture um, or the contrast? Yeah, or, or and, and the tones and the shadows. Um... There's two ways. You either start with the lightest parts or start with the darkest parts. Um, mm. if, if, for instance, I'm doing an interior scene, um, if it's an interior scene, like this oh. one where there's a lot, of, a lot of tone over the whole thing, then mm. I start by saying, where are the lightest parts? Mm -hmm. Because you need to preserve those, as, say, with watercolour um, art. You need to work out your lights. And sometimes... Um, you know, sometimes there are not not here, but on others, such as this one, which you, you showed earlier, there are just a few where there's interior lights. There's just a few parts where I've actually left the paper white. So working out where the really bright parts are so that you don't cover them is, is the first thing to do. And then I usually also try and go really find the darkest parts and work out how dark they are. And I think that that actually comes from my oil painting because that is a... When, when you paint, that is with colour, that's what you, have, you really should do, I think. You, you put your, your lightest parts in, your darkest parts in at the very start, and then you know how you're working all the other colour shades and tones in with those two extremes. And so I, I, I tend to do that with this, and then you, know, um, then, then you know what you're playing with. And this is the other thing that I've done. Um, these are my Copic markers. These are the... The um, I have this in front of me all the time, so that so that when I pick up a marker, 
you know, I look at this and think, how, how dark do I want the grey mm. to be? Okay, that or that. And then, yeah, so I just find that a really great little time saver. Um, it's, it's with me every time, every time I do it. Therefore, your, your basic um, talent is controlling the negative spaces in your sketches. It's a, it's a much important thing that you have. Uh, and if you control the negative spaces, the, the positive ones will be qualified in your sketches. Uh, thank you very much about that. So uh, yeah. another question. Can, can I just say with the negative spaces, I find the negative spaces are most important for the, um, the sculptural decorations uh, of the uh, drawings. Um, because I can't, I'm no great expert at drawing figures. And so I don't try to draw the figures. I draw the spaces around the figures. I draw the shapes that the arms and the legs make in relation to the walls around them. And I find the figures just appear. So, yeah, I'm a believer in negative space. So uh, how long does it take um, each sketch in every day? How many time you, that you spend about it? Um, it? Most of them would be completed between four and five hours. Um, I've become a little bit faster since I've done the time lapses because I don't get up and walk around the way I used to. <laughs> once, I, <laughs> once I start, I'm, I'm kind of doing it, and so that keeps me settled in place. Um, yeah, it would be un very unusual for one to be less than three and a half hours, and mm. it would be very unusual to one to, for anything to be much more than five, five and a half hours. You know, you know I'm... Um, uh I'm searching about, I'm researching about this uh, literature and I got this matter. Uh, the, the most of sketchers using the four, uh, 45 minutes, uh, approximately 15 minutes and less than one hour to our sketches. But about your, uh, your scale of your works, uh, this is uh, magnificent if you finish it uh, around the one hour or one, one half hour. And uh, your hand, <laughs> amazing, and you <laughs> have to draw. Maybe you mixed uh, steps. You know, I, I think you uh, mix the steps together, and you do it to your mind. And uh, if we uh, structure this or we extract the steps in the paper as a bullet, for example. So yes. we must say uh, you underdraw, you draw, and after that refine that. Also, um, put um, at the details, keep the contrast, the texture, the shape, also um, everything yes. else. So after that, you yeah. using the color, the gray and the tones, the different tones of color, gray. Uh, so how do you uh, choose this color? Because this is uh, your style. At using the gray one. I, I saw something, the colorful uh, about your sketches, but I know uh, that your, this style is so, um, uh, you know, the inf so influenced, the much influenced to the audiences. How do you um, select this color to your rendering? Well, um, the, 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 because these are mostly from photos, um, the photo is the first reference point and probably the, the, the tones. I mean, there are two things to consider with the greys. One is um, shadows and where shadows are and how deep the shadows are, how strong the light is and mm. so how bright the brights are, how dark the darks are. Um, and the second point is what is what I call the local colour. What's the colour of the actual object? So, for instance, you look at a French rooftop scene, scene and... The roofs are mostly, you know, a sort of a bluey grey colour and some of them are quite dark. Mm. So they're often darker than the, the walls. So you m may want to put some tone on those when they're in sunlight. And, uh, but then the parts of those roofs that are in shadow um, will be darker again. Um, mm. So you, you're kind of juggling those, those aspects as well. Um, not that you have to be exact, you're trying to create an effect. And that's oh. what I keep saying to myself, you, because especially with some of my things, um, you know, I mean, there are, uh, you know, this, this was a drawing, um, this was from a photo by um, an account at, Calico, at Calicals, mm. a guy called Sam. And I just loved, it was early morning, the sun was just starting to hit, the sun was just starting to hit, 
the front of Sacre Coeur, but this part here was in, in full sunlight. And I, this 